Well, in our previous, in our previous lesson, we were discussing about a subjunctive, and uh, uh, let me share the screen. I think I'm not sharing it yet. Now I could. Can you see it, right? Can you? Sure. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's great. Well, in our previous class, we were discussing about the subjunctive. Do you remember the structure that there are some verbs that are followed by that? Yep. Yeah. Do you remember that part? Mm -hmm. Good. Then mm -hmm. we were discussing about this part. It says, uh, well, I shared this yesterday, I think, in the group. Okay. Alejándonos del español, se puede decir ask a question. Normalmente nos preguntamos si ask es preguntar y question es pregunta. ¿Será traducido como preguntar una pregunta? No tiene nada que ver. En inglés es totalmente válido. Ok, entonces si tenías esa pregunta, no hay problema. Ask a question, it's ok. ¿Alguna consulta? No, right? Ok, perfect. Then we have the difference between between and among. Ok, between se refiere al espacio que separa dos cosas o personas físicamente o intervalos. Y a la asociación de ideas, como por ejemplo, there are a uh, difference between, between and among. Among se usa para mostrar las opciones entre tres o más posibilidades, para decir que estás entre alguna cosa, entre las personas, y también para que indicar que se produce particularmente en un grupo. Si estoy rodeado de 80 personas, digo, I am among the people, estoy entre las personas. Did you understand that part? No? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then we were discussing about need plus the verb plus ing. Do you remember that part? Sure. Nope. Do you remember? Need plus verb ing. Yes. For example, uh, if I, tell me. Uh, the problem is solving. The passive, no? Like a passive. Yeah. It is like that. I but for use the object, uh, the object as a subject. Of course. For example, I need to I need to wash my clothes. I need to wash my clothes. So my clothes need washing. Wash. I need to fix my laptop. My laptop Laptop needs fixing. Needs fixing. fixing. Okay. Uh, am I recording? Do you remember? Yes, I'm recording it. Any questions about this grammar? Because we were discussing about mm -hmm. this in the previous one, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Then, vamos a aprender qué significa ain't. Do you know how to use ain't? Ya yeah. sabes cómo usar ain't? Is that true? No. It's not ain't. Right? ain't. Yes. ¿Saben cómo usar el ain't? Uh -huh. When you try, try to say, say it's not. not. Yes. Remember, ain't, this is it. Son pocas veces que me han preguntado cómo usar el ain't y qué significado tiene, pero el uso correcto del ain't es, eso es slang, y debería ser utilizado en una conversación, no debería ser utilizado, ¿ok? Ahora, en lo personal, he escuchado hablar de esta forma en algunas canciones y diversas películas, pero no porque la escuchemos en varios lugares significa que está bien. Por ejemplo, en español hay muchas personas que hablan mal, como dicen pe o dicen vamo, que lo digan muchas personas no significa que esté bien, ¿ok? Ain't es una negación y supuesta contracción de I'm not, is not, are not. También de have not y has not en el present perfect. For example, I don't want to say I am not a teacher. Y digo, I ain't a teacher, I ain't a teacher. ¿Te das cuenta? She ain't watching TV. She is not watching TV. Did you understand? So we use it for the present progressive, for the present uh, simple, for the present perfect. Did you understand? No. Yeah. Yep. Okay. El habla coloquial se nutre de este tipo de formas incorrectas de hablar. Lo cierto es que se usa ain't en inglés es como decir en español no voy a lavar el carro en vez de decir no voy a lavar el carro. Lo dicho, no es inglés apropiado y si se quiere usar el idioma formalmente se debe evitar el ain't. Lo puedes ocupar en todas las negaciones y en todos los tiempos. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Tell me. Yes. For, For example, example uh, there are some that that that, that it calls, calls ain't, ain't no sunshine. sunshine. But ain't it is ain't no sunshine. sunshine. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ain't no sunshine. Ain't no sunshine. Like no this. Sunshine. Yes. Uh, Uh, which means, yes. and this is like, 
is not not like this. Uh -huh. yes, I double. Double, yes, which okay. means that there is one. Okay, I guess the sun is there is or there ain't no sunshine. There ain't no sunshine like this. I guess there ain't, which means there is not, but this is the double. Uh -huh. So there it means no that there is. But there is. But it's not no redundant. redundant. Uh, no, it's not redundant. It the the meaning is different. For example, I uh, I never I never play soccer. Then you say I don't never play soccer. This is yo no nunca juego fútbol. Yo no nunca. Si es que no nunca va a ser siempre. Entonces en lugar de decir I always es doble negativo. I always play soccer. Vas a decir, I don't never play soccer. ¿Te das cuenta? La doble negación. Eso es. Pero es bien raro usar doble negativo. ¿Ok? Yes. Another question that you have. Pero sí se usa la doble negación. Pero en contextos informales. Como tú lo acabas de decir, es una canción. Yeah. Ok. No more questions about that part. Great. So then we were discussing about the future. Do you remember we were discussing about the present simple, the present progressive, future with well, future with going to? We're, we're done with that part. Is that true? Uh, Denise and Jimmy, do you remember mm -hmm. the previous class? We're done with that part. Then we were discussing about what it used to. Do you remember the difference between what and used to? Nope. Oh, yes. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, for it's example, the same, but... it's the same. Okay, I will speak. I will speak, and what I want you to do is to understand what I'm saying. Okay, so now focus on this part. In English, we have used to, which means solía. So you know the grammar. I used to play soccer. I'm sorry, I used to play soccer. I used to play soccer. Yo solía jugar fútbol. Of course, would has two meanings. Would has Two meanings or two functions. Okay, call it whatever you want. The first one is yusta. It's the same, yusta. And the second one means haría in Spanish. For example, let me write here. Let me write here. Uh, okay, so here we have, oh, sorry. Here we have um, yusta, which means solía. And then we, you know the, you know the structure, right? I used to play. I used to play soccer. And then we have wood. And then we have wood. And wood has two one. Uh, wood used to and haría. Okay? So wood is the same. It could be used to or it could be haría. So for example, you can say I used to. I'm sorry. I would play soccer. Which means I used to play soccer is the same. The meaning is the same, but would means area too. So when you say I would play soccer, that means yo jugaría football. So it depends on the context. Va a depender el significado mucho del contexto. Hasta aquí se entendió. Up to this point, do you have any questions? No. For, For example, example it's correct to say when, when I was younger, younger I, I would play, play soccer. soccer. Yes, when I was younger, I would play soccer. Cuando eras más joven, o cuando era más joven, yes, solía uh -huh. jugar. I would play soccer. It's the same. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. But now, focus on this part. Focus, focus, focus. But now, when would means used to, okay? Used to, you can use with dynamic verbs and stative. Stative verbs. But used to, you just use with <laughs> dynamic. Dynamic verbs. So, for example, you say, I used to play soccer. It, it doesn't say, I would play soccer. But you say, and I used to love uh, music because now I hate music. So, I used to love. You never say, I would love music. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. Why? Because love is a stative. A stative. A stative. Dynamic with used to. Okay? You get it? 
Okay, so antes de continuar quería decirles de que el justa sí se puede con love y con el would no se puede porque love es estático. Pero sí se puede con el I would love music, pero si es que significa me eh, em, este, gustaría, encantaría o gustaría la música. Okay, I would love, me encantaría o gustaría la, la música. Si significa haría, si, tiene, si se puede. Pero como yo está, no. Ahora, ¿qué cosa son stative o dynamic? Dynamic verbs, como su nombre lo dice, son verbos dinámicos. Son acciones, como por ejemplo, sleep, read, write, ah, draw, okay. actions. Y luego tenemos stative verbs, que son estados. Pueden dividirse en varios, en los sentidos. Los sentidos, see, hear, smell, senses. Luego tenemos feelings. For example, I love, I hate. Eh, mental process. Mental process. Oh, sorry. Aware. Mental process. Think. Think. Belief. Belief. Uh, me measurements. Unidades de medidas. I weigh 50 kilograms. Yo peso 50 kilos. Yo nunca voy a decir, yo estoy pesando 50 kilos. Estos son stated verbs y los otros son dynamic verbs. ¿Hasta aquí se acordará? Sure. Yeah. Ok. Yes. Entonces, recuérdate que el used in Spanish to make it clear because uh, this is really important. El would, cuando significa used a, solamente va a trabajar con verbos dinámicos. Pero cuando significa día, le da igual. I would play soccer, si se puede. Yo solía jugar fútbol. I would play soccer, también se puede. Yo jugaría fútbol. No puedo decir I would love music, porque love is stated. Pero sí puedo decir I would love music cuando significa día. Do you have any question up to this point? No. Nope. Ok, estamos puliendo todo lo que hemos visto. Mira, estamos repasando would, used to, ain't, need, con ing... Y el subjunctive, ¿ok? Continuemos. It's nice of you. ¿Se acuerdan del it's nice of you que vimos en la clase anterior? ¿También? Para continuar. Mm. Do you have any questions? Mm. No. No. Ok, good. El conditional, if I had my way. Do you remember this one? Significa, si fuera por mí. Si fuera por mí. Uh -huh. I would visit. Si fuera por ella, she would probably watch. If I had my way. Lo usamos... ¿En qué? En the second one and third conditionals. ¿Ok? It is used when someone says what would they, or what they would do. In Spanish, it basically means si se fuera por mí. Por ejemplo, te digo, no ten, uh, if I had money, I would buy a car. Si tuviese dinero, compraría un carro. Entonces diría, if I, ¿cómo sería? If I had my, if I had my way, I would buy a car. Si fuera por mí, compraría un carro. Did you understand if I had my way? Sure. Si fuera por mí, ¿lo puedo usar con la segunda o con la tercera condición? Condicional. Any questions before we continue? Uh, uh, when, when I say I will, I will have a ready split, uh, the translate is yo podría is there, estar okay. separado. Okay, a split, acá lo escribí. To split in this context means to live quickly. To leave quickly. My friend wants to stay at the party, but if I had my way, I would have ready a split. A split significa irse rápidamente. Okay. Dice, ex... No, no sé cómo traducirlo. Para mí es irse rápido. Irse al toque. Fugar, como lo quieras llamar, porque fugar es escapar. Puede ser. Puede ser escapar, fugar. Dice, mis amigos... Sí, que no es Exactamente, dice Mis amigos quieren quedarse en la fiesta Pero si fuera por mí Me escaparía o me iría rapidito Puedes traducirlo de acuerdo al contexto ¿no? but, but if I would have already split Ok, pero yo me habría Escapado Any questions about this part? <risa> Separate, ¿no? uh, split up, split up, uh, sí, separarse. Uh, to, to divorce, to divorce. Ah, sí, split, 
Split, ah, también, split the bills, dividir. Yes, that's true, that's true. También es split, es abrir las piernas. Split. Yeah. No more questions. My family is visiting Italy this week, but if I had my way, I would visit Estonia. Uh -huh. Si fuera por mí. Uh -huh. Si fuera por mí. Okay, next. If I were you. Uh, if I were you, but if I had my way, es más, uh, también es cool. If I, were, if I were you, I would go there. If I had my way, si fuera por mí, I would. Yes, it's the same. The it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. If I were you, si fuera tú, uh, if I had my way, si fuera por mí. No, no, no. La primera es si fuese tú, si yo fuese tú. La otra es si fuera por mí, pero no tengo la decisión. Porque la tomas tú. Yes, it's the same. Si fuera tú o si fuera por mí. It's not hard to say if I was me. No, if I was you. Realmente sí se puede decir if I was you, pero gramaticalmente, eh, según los diccionarios y todo, la, todo lo que tiene que ver con Cambridge, nos dicen de que tenemos que usar el subjuntivo, en este caso el where. Es por eso que decimos if I were you. ¿Ok? Pero sí. En contextos informales, tú puedes decir, if I was a teacher, por ejemplo, if I was a teacher, I would teach grammar, if I were a teacher, correcto, no hay ningún problema. Pero tú sabes que gramaticalmente sí, tienes que escribir if I were. Ok, uh -huh. another question, esta es muy buena, if I had my way, I like it a lot. The adjective. Algunas veces nos han dicho, no, no se usa el da con el adjective, se usa con el superlative. ¿Se acuerdan? Or not? Yes. This is a typical structure you understand when you read it, when you, when you read it, but you never use. Probably none has ever shown it to you and you don't feel comfortable about using it. Just in case, because you have always been taught that an adjective has to follow by a noun. Here we have finally something that will push you to use it. Explanation. This structure helps you avoid overusing the word people. You have to omit the word people and add the before the adjective. For example, instead of saying rich people, you say the, the rich. The rich. Instead of saying the people, the people who are The, or, the, or the disabled people, you say, or disabled people, you say, the, the disabled, the disabled. Instead of saying, English people is speak very fast, you say, the English, the English. I want to help poor people. I want to help poor people. I want to help the poor, the poor. ¿Te das cuenta? ¿Se entendió cómo usar los adjetivos con el de? Es the general, of course. Es the general idea, but you, you don't use the noun. No uh, estoy usando. Can I use when I, I say the Peruvians? Es que tienes que decir the Peruvians. The Peruvian. Uh -huh. But it's subject, no? Peruvian is subject. Not no, Peruvian uh, is an adjective. Peruvian, English... Peruvian, English, uh, I don't know, like German, todos son adjetivos. Las nacionalidades o gentilicios son adjetivos. Y mayormente tú dirías, Spa oh, Peruvian people are very friendly. En lugar de decir, Peruvian people are very friendly, dirías, the Peruvian are very friendly. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Did you understand? Amazing. Uh -huh. Continuemos. ¿Se acuerdan usar el énfasis? Eh? Here we have another structure that comes in handy when comparing facts. Hoy tenemos el speaking, así que los voy a, vamos a hacer una pequeña entrevista dentro de... Creo que acabamos, empezamos hoy. Todavía nos queda tiempo. Here we have one structure that comes in handy when comparing facts. Did you know about this structure? For example, he likes Kev's paws and better yet. He shares and he likes all of them. The first part, he likes. In the middle, we add, and better yet, to make the comparison. The second part, he shares and likes all of them. Yet and still are to emphasize better and worse. The one you use is up to you. They mean the same, guys. The meaning is the same. Okay? For example, please, Denise, read the first example. 
Bridge. Now come here two weeks apart. And come here for two weeks or better. Yet, Sid, come here for three weeks. Ok, te das cuenta que primero va la primera parte, luego coma, or better, yet, or still. Los dos significan lo mismo. Ok, please, Jimmy, read the, the, the second part. Uh, the, the better is the second, second part. part. Tell me. Uh, when I use that uh, grammar, better is the second part. The better. second uh, sentence. Exactly, exactly. ¿Cómo traducirían okay. better yet? Mejor aún. Exacto, mm. Jimmy. Mejor aún. Por ejemplo, te digo, ven aquí por dos semanas. O mejor aún, vente tres semanas. Come here mm. for two weeks, or better yet, come here for three weeks. It's Friday, and better year is payday. ¿Cómo traducirías el segundo? Y mejor aún, es viernes, y lo mejor, y mejor yeah. aún. Es el día de pago, it's payday. Uh -huh, ¿Te das payday. cuenta? Esta expresión es, pero que estas, en estas estoy recopilando las expresiones más usadas por mí. También usamos el words. El words. ¿Ok? Words. Uh, mi, mi, si me preguntan, Carlos, ¿cuál utilizas tú el still o el yet? Por ejemplo, yo me he dado cuenta que al hablar digo yet. Yet, con el better yet. El better yet. Pero el words is still. Worse still. Yo uso el worse con el still y el better con el yet. ¿Por mm, qué? Worse still es peor aún. Y peor aún, worse still. ¿Por qué, Carlos? ¿Por qué? Porque para mí yo me acostumbré, en mi lengua, por ejemplo, para mí es más fácil decir better yet que decir better still. Better still. Entonces yo me acostumbré a better yet, better yet. Y con el worse me pasa lo mismo. Yo no digo worse yet. Digo worse still, por el último sonido. No sé si notan alguna facilidad para pronunciar. A ver, escuchemos, Denise, the worse, better yet o better still. Yeah. Worse yet. Uh, because worse ends with a S. Worse still. Worse y el sonido se junta. Worse still. Worse still. Yeah. Uh, yet, yeah, S, I, I, E. Y, E. Yet. Así me Yet. 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 Es como una E, mira. Yeah. Yet. 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 No, no. E, no, no. E, I have to say. Oh. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? You say E, E, T? Yet. Uh -huh. Oh, yet. Uh -huh. ah, let's, go, let's go to the Cambridge Dictionary. <laughs> ah, the, I was like, e, what are you saying? Are you crazy? E, E, T. Okay, let's yeah. go to Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge Dictionary. Oh, that's a good question. I prefer to say yet, like why. Con why. A ver, veamos. Con yet? Yes. Yet. 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 Uh, yet. Yet. It's not yet. Uh, no. Yet. Uh, mm. But it's the same, I think. They sound pretty similar, you know? Yet. 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 Yeah. No, but but uh, this is different. A little bit, just a little bit. But when you speak, I'm pretty sure that nobody will uh, will notice the difference because no, you say that. jet, 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 y nadie dice jet. Yeah. Es como por ejemplo en español nadie me ha dado cuenta que dice zapato. Todos dicen zapato. Ninguno dice zapato, right? Entonces en inglés esto mm -hmm. sucede. Este también sucede. Por ejemplo, la correcta sería jet. A ver, escuchemos. Yet. Jet. Mira, es jet. Jet. Pero todos dicen jet. Oh, no, sí, sí se dice. <ríe> es lo mismo. Ah. Jet. Yeah, es lo mismo. Es the same. La jet de, del barco de jet. No, ese es el, el jet. I mean, the jet. What do you mean? This one. Ah, it's a kind of airplane. Jet. Ah. Airplane. Airplane. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this one. Mm -hmm. the, the jet lag. No, uh -huh. this is different. Uh, it's different. Jet. 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 Uh, and this is jet. This it's is similar jet. to the adjective substance. Jet. One second. Jet. It's similar to the G of uh, Argentinian people. Argentinian. Argentinian. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, do you say Argentinian? 
Argentine. Argentine. Um, yeah, it's a Argentine. day. Now, it could be Argentinian, but for example, in the US, I think we say Argentine. Look at this. Argentine. Yeah, Argentine. 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 Uh, uh, let's listen. Argentine. Argentine. Argentinian. Argentinian. Let's listen together. Oh, that's a tricky question. Uh, oh, can you, can you, ah, uh, uh, well, I'm sure in the audience. Listen. Argentinian. Argentinian is what we learned when we were studying, you know? But we have mm. Argent, uh, but we have Argentine here. But you Argentine. Argentine. No, I, I don't say hear. Argent, yeah, look at this. Yeah. I want wow. to listen to this pronunciation. Argentine pronunciation in English. Listen. Argentine. Argentine. ¿Ves? Argentine. Ah, Argentine. Argentine. Estaba bien. Lo otro es Argentinian. Argentinian. Pero hay algunas partes donde sí dicen Argentine. Argentine es un poquito más británico. Mm. Eh, yo, por ejemplo, he escuchado más Argentine que Argentinian. Y siempre enseñaba ah, Argentina. Ah, aquí era Argentina. Yes, Argentina. No, no, Argentina. Argentina. Tell me, tell me. No, I also hear Argentina. Ah, you both, both of them. Yes. It, it was like, today I'm going to teach basic, I think. Today I'm going to teach this. I'm not pretty sure. But yeah, this is true. Uh, well, I prefer to say Argentine. Uh, I don't know why. But I say Argentine. Thank you. So, so jet yeah. is the... the... The, the pronunciation. Jade. Jade. Uh, Spanish. Jade. Jade. Yes. Jet. 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 If you want to be picky, if you want to be picky with here with your pronunciation, you say jet. For example, come here for two weeks or better jet. Come here for three weeks. Jet. Mira, mis dientes para hacer sonidos. Mis dientes chocan y vibran. Yeah. Ajá, jet, jet. Sí, esa J, como le dije anteriormente en la clase anterior, todo viene del francés. El francés tuvo un gran impacto mm -hmm. al momento de la creación de esta, esta lengua, ¿no? Porque se hablaba primero. Entonces, se tiene todas esas palabras, como le digo, champagne, el E. Por ejemplo, también otra parte que viene del francés es, por ejemplo, esas terminaciones en set me, la E, -I, con la E, la Y, también viene del francés. Por ejemplo, destiny. Uh, pay, pay. Uh, what, I, what else? Uh, don't say, I don't know. Buffet, no. buffet, a champagne, uh, bouquet. Te das cuenta? Tiene un gran eh, impacto en, 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 la, en la forma en que se creó el y se desarrolló el lenguaje o idioma. Recuerda que idioma es el idioma oficial de un país y lenguaje es el, el tema, el curso. <laughs> ¿Ok? Entonces, no confundir también. He notado que dicen idiom. Idiom no es idioma. No, idiom no es, idioma. es un dialecto. Es como que un expreso. Por ejemplo, en Perú, en Perú personas dicen, um, estoy micio. ¿Eso es idiom o no? Mm -hmm. ¿Qué opinan? Puede no. ser considerado yes, idioma. idioma. Puede sí. ser considerado. Porque está. Pero micio, yeah. realmente micio no está en el diccionario como eso. Un idiom puede ser, por ejemplo, algo como... Um, perro que ladra no muerde Perro que ladra no muerde ¿Qué significa el perro? No, significa de que eh, Por más bravo que seas no te va a hacer nada Idiom tiene un significado diferente Al literal ¿Entiende? Mm -hmm. En España, eso es un idioma Y un language Un language es un idioma Que es el idioma oficial de un país Ok, be careful So guys, if you want to be picky with your pronunciation You say jet Yet, as I said before, I prefer to say better yet and worse still because for me it's easy to pronounce them together. Do you have any questions? You can take a screenshot if you yeah. want. No questions? No, that is super very picky. picky. I have to. <laughs> She's very picky. <laughs> okay, let's I continue. Want to my yes. Okay, then uh, we'll I Tell me. Use or and uh, and uh, is different. Uh, oh, it's, it's the same. same. Es decir, well, yeah. you, you can use whatever you want. You can use. Uh, como yo hablo okay. español, como yo hablo español, yo digo, o mejor aún, entonces digo, or. Pero puedes decir, oh, yeah. y mejor aún, ¿no? 
en español yo digo, o mejor aún, pero hay otros que dicen, y mejor aún. Entonces, it's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. okay. So, uh -huh. let's continue. And now, this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. So, well, this was the first one that I wrote. It's an advanced structure. Have be or yet to. For example, you say, I have yet to send the letter. It's the same. I haven't sent the letter yet. Okay. Did you understand the part? Let me turn on the lights. I want to turn on the lights. Mm, I've never used yet in the middle of a sentence. Ah, no. Me too. No, always in the end. At the end. Yeah, because yet means aún o todavía. For example, siempre decimos, I haven't read the book yet. No he leído el libro aún. I haven't read the book yet. ¿Puedo decir más natural? Uh -huh. I. I. What else? I have yet. Yet to read in the basement. To, to read the book. Yet. No, to read the book. I have to read the book. I have yet to read the book. Yes, it is like that. And also, you can say, I am yet to read the book. I am yet to read ah. the book. Yeah, this is more common. I am read, I am yet to read the book. Yeah, I would say that one. Por ejemplo, <laughs> cuando um, tú eres niño, tú eres, estás comiendo y te preguntan, eh, ¿has almorzado? Entonces tú dices que aún no, ¿no? I haven't uh, had yeah. breakfast or I haven't had dinner yet, right? I haven't ah. had lunch yet. Tú dirías, I am... <laughs> No, no, I am half yet yes. to half lunch or dinner. Did you understand? No, I am <laughs> what? Okay, don't worry. Uh, okay. Here. Try to because you uh, the, the present perfect, perfect and you were using another with I. I. No? Yeah, with well, them, never be <laughs> sure. For example, look at this. Si me preguntan, oye, Carlos, ¿has almorzado? Y me estás viendo, digo, no. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't had, uh, I haven't had lunch yet. Recuerda que el yet siempre va en negativo y va al final, ¿cierto? Entonces, esto viene a ser como I, I have yet to have lunch. To have, ah, to have, to have, to have, to have, Exactamente, el verbo en su forma base. Y si no te quieres confundir, le cambias aquí, por ejemplo, este... I haven't eaten lunch yet. Entonces, ¿cómo sería aquí? I have yet. I have yet to eat. To eat. To eat, to eat. To eat lunch. lunch. Ahora también, en lugar de decir esto, puedo decir uh, lo siguiente con el verbo to be, ¿no? Dependiendo de qué verbo te ponen, I'm using. For example, I am yet. I'm yet to have lunch. And I am uh, yet to eat lunch. Significa que todavía no he comido. Ah, uh, is it a... Huh? Yeah, sure. That's it. We can, we can do that. Uh, teacher, it's hard, hard to translate... Eh, estoy pendiente de... Almorzar. El problema es ese. Que no tienes que buscar la traducción. Tú tienes que aprender de que... Uh, I have yet to have lunch. Es como I haven't had lunch yet. Or I am yet to have lunch. Si me pides traducirlo... Es como que yo estoy a la espera, dijiste, ¿cierto? ¿No? Pendiente. Estoy pendiente. I don't understand the Spanish. <laughs> Spanish version. Estoy pendiente de uh, Yo lo traduciría como yet. Yo estoy a la espera porque la estoy, espera. yo aún estoy, yo aún estoy a la espera uh, para almorzar. Uh, pero suena totalmente raro. Entonces, úsalo nada más. I have yet to have lunch, que significa I haven't had lunch yet. ¿Ok? okay. Eh, te digo, por ejemplo, yo te digo, Denise, I haven't read a book yet. Utiliza las dos versiones, a ver. You have yet to, to read the book. To read the book. ¿Y cómo sería con el am? Con el verbo to be, I'm sorry. You are. You are. You are yet to, to read the book. Read the book. To read the book. Jimmy, what about you? And I haven't traveled to the UK yet. Mm. 
I have yet to travel to the UK. Yes, ahora utiliza el siguiente, mira. She, she hasn't, mira, she hasn't eh, had lunch. She hasn't had lunch yet. Yes, she hasn't mm. had lunch yet. She has yet to she have yet. lunch. She has yet to have lunch. <laughs> or, or, she, or, she is yet to have lunch. Amazing. Did you understand this grammar? Mm, yes, yes, yes. It's super yes, simple, yes, right? Yes, yes. Esta es la forma en la que se habla. Only with, with the present. present. Uh, only with that? With the present? Perfect, right? Siempre y cuando tengas uh, un, yes. ah, sí, un yet al final y un present perfect. Uh, okay. Okay. De aquí parte esto. Todo parte de aquí. Teacher, when the, when the word yet is in the first or the sentence is uh, are, no, is uh, sin embargo. Uh, it could be, you know, yet means pero, sí. Uh, por ejemplo, yo digo um, I am the best. Sí, lo vimos la clase pasada, hace tres clases creo, ¿cierto? But, but, but uh -huh. I am not happy. Entonces te dice, I am the best, but I am not happy. Yet, puedes usar el yet. También aquí, en lugar del but, usas el yet, pero es muy formal. Esto ah. es formal. Es formal. Incluso me atrevería a decir que es tal mismo nivel de un... De un never the less. A ese mm. nivel, never the less. Ah, es, sin embargo, claro, en español es como un however. 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 Okay, do you have any questions up to this point? What do you think about the grammar? Is it complicated for you? Did you find it easy? No, it's easy. Ah, in, uh, in other context, uh, for example, when I use uh, neither, uh, it's similar to yet in the in, uh, When you use neither. Neither. When, When I, I uh, would like, like to use neither. Neither. Can you give me a exam an, ex an example? Neither. Mm, uh, um, I don't... Uh, my, my friend don't like this kind of music. Uh, I neither too. Ah, el neither y el either. Okay, uh -huh. let's practice. For example, um, you have this part. Uh, también. Y tenemos tampoco. Okay? También mm -hmm. en inglés. Uh, we we'll say, for example, I like soccer. La oración está en afirmativo o negativo. Affirmative, right? Sí, me gusta el fútbol. Mm -hmm. ¿Tú qué dirías si alguien dice me gusta el fútbol? Dices, ¿a mí también o a mí tampoco? Mm. A mí también. A mí también. Of course, la única respuesta que nos quedan es me too. Me too es la vieja confiable. Me too. ¿Habrá alguna otra forma de responder? Yes. La primera es utilizando el so. El auxiliar de la oración. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar del I like soccer? Que no se ve. So do I. So do I. So do I. So do I. Or, or puedo decir I do. I do too. I do too. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, me gusta el fútbol. Eh, puede ser I like to or I do too. I do too. ¿Se entendió? Now, focus on this part. Negative. I say, I don't like. I don't like soccer. I don't like soccer. Me neither. Yeah, sure. You say me. Neither. Me neither. Or neither. So, uh... Don't no, I. Neither do. Ah, neither do. Neither do I or do I. I. I don't either. Neither. Ah. I don't either. What about this? This is for you. This is for you. Uh, let me write here the affirmative version, and you say I. I loved music. I love music. What is the the answers? What are the answers? Sorry. So did I. So did I, so did I, and I, I did too, I did too, I did too. Oh, Jesus Christ, what happened here? <laughs> I jumped. 
Next. I didn't. Uh, no, I'm yeah, guessing. Either. Either. Yeah, what is the answer? Uh, okay. uh, neither. Neither, neither did, did, did I. Neither did, did I. I. Or? I didn't either. I didn't either. Uh -huh. Did you understand? So it doesn't matter what kind of sentence are you saying. Um, you have to use this grammar. This is what you what you want to say, right? Mm -hmm. Or you want to say... In that context, context I, I, I will use uh, neither or either. either. No. Only, only for answers. answers. No, no it's, it, they are not only for answers. Yeah. Okay, but, but did you understand this part? Maybe I can continue if you want. Do you have any questions yeah. about this? Okay, let's continue no. here. I have a presentation. I have a presentation. Uh, yeah, I have a question. question. Um, about the same thing. So I was not recorded. Okay. Or? No, 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 yeah, recording. Either. In American English, we say either, neither. But in British, we say either, neither. Either, neither, ah. either, neither. Okay? You use them. Uh, to, well, in this case, either choice between two things, two adjectives, two nouns, two verbs, two phrases, or two clauses. For example, it says, I'm not sure where Bruno is from. He is either Spanish or Italian. Here we have two adjectives. Ah. Now you, you remember? Either. Él es o español o italiano, pero solamente es uno. No puede ser los dos. Ok, imagínate que tú quieres ir a comprar, oye, no sé si comprarme el polo o el pantalón. This is, I don't know if I should buy either the t-shirt or the pant. ¿Te das cuenta? Cuando tienes que escoger entre dos cosas, dos sustantivos, dos adjetivos, puedes usar el either y, y para decir que uno de los dos. O esto o lo otro. ¿Se entendió, Denise and Jimmy? Yeah, you got it. No es únicamente. Yeah. Either, either is nor. Ajá, yes. Puede ser con verbo either apologize or leave. O puedes decir con two phrases, you can stay either with me or with Janet. Ok. Clauses. Pero aquí, miren, miren aquí, cuando son dos cláusulas, eh, el either va al inicio. Either I drive to the airport or I get a taxi. O me voy manejando al aeropuerto o me voy en taxi. O me consigo un taxi. Con prefijos, either pre or post date the document. And neither es como que, por ejemplo, dice, Brian didn't mention they were moving house. His wife didn't mention that they were moving house. So, neither Brian nor his wife mentioned ni Brian ni su esposa. Ninguno de los dos. Okay? Did you understand? Mm, nor, I don't get it, the meaning of nor. Nor, ¿de dónde? El nor es un no. Neither es como un ni. Ni Brian, ni, ni su esposa. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, exacto. Por ejemplo, tú dices, a mí no me gusta la cebolla. A mí no me gusta el tomate. Entonces, I like, me gusta, I don't like, ¿qué diría? Neither. Neither. O puedes decir... Uh, neither tomato nor onion. ¿Qué más? Ni tomate ni cebolla are my cup of tea. Son de mi agrado. Ok. Oh, it's, sorry, this guy neither yeah, are my cup of tea. Yes. Son de mi agrado. This grammar is correct. It's correctly used in, in, uh, in, in a, a formal, formal letter, letter, for example, nor. nor. Neither, neither... Nor, nor. Ah, uh, nor, yes, yeah, sure. Here I have an example about the formal and informal version. Let me let me show you, right? Because you know this, right? This is super simple. Is it true? Okay. okay. Um, well, well, I need to use both of them in the sentence, but, but I, I try, try to use nor. Neither, of Always. course. Tienes neither, que usar el nor. nor. Neither, nor. Y el otro es either or. Either ah, or. Either, or. Ah, either okay. or. Either or. Now, uh, of course, you can use with nouns. You can use with, 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 with verbs. Like, Tom, he said that he would contact me, but he neither wrote nor phone. Ni me escribió, ni me llamó. También con sustantivos. Aquí está tu pregunta, Jimmy. 
Mira aquí, la, la versión más formal es esta, la que te acabo de enseñar. Neither Italy nor France, ni Italia ni Francia, got the quarterfinals last year. Llegaron a los cuartos de finales el año, pa, el año pasado. Y ahora veamos el siguiente. Italy didn't get to the quarterfinals last year. Dice que Italia no llegó a los cuartos de finales y Francia tampoco, no, sí o no. Sí. Entonces, ¿te Ajá. acuerdas que acabamos de ver el, el, el ejemplo de aquí? Dame un segundo. Ah, uh, where is it? ¿Qué dice aquí? Don't either, I didn't either. ¿Te acuerdas? Entonces aquí está. Y Francia, didn't either. Yeah. En Francia tampoco. ¿Te das cuenta, Denise and Jimmy? You got it? Yeah. Any questions? No? No. Okay. So, the subject, focus on this part. Look at this. Either his mother or my sister's. So, my sister is the subject that is closer to the, to the main verb. So, you use are, but maybe you want to change the order. So, you have either my sister's or his mother. In this case, his mother is singular. You use is. Okay? Yeah. Or, if you change the order, it's important. It's the same with, it's similar to neither, because you have neither nor sister's or, nor my mother is. Any questions? Short. So now let's practice a little bit of speaking. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Uh -huh. No, it's incorrect, right? ¿Cuál es la respuesta? I have the possibility. Oh. Organize it. Organize schedule. Me. schedule. Schedule. Or if you want to use to organize, you say, I have the opportunity to organize my schedule. Okay. Now you say, I have the opportunity to organize my schedule. My schedule. You get it? Jimmy, you? What about you? Jimmy, tell me about the advantages of your job. Mm, okay. okay. Well, um, the, the first, first is I I didn't call for a nutritionist. <laughs> you didn't or you don't? I, I don't. I don't call for. I don't, don't, call don't, for. Uh, huh? I I don't, don't have, have to, to to call for a nutritionist. Okay. Okay. Or maybe you yes. can say. Um, okay. Continue. Continue. Um, uh, well, I um, I. I I have the opportunity, opportunity uh, to to learn uh, about different kind of diets or or, or possibility of uh, of healthy dishes, for example, you know, in, uh, for my own um, be own behavior, no, I mean, own, uh, my own my own lifestyle behavior. Mm -hmm. For my propia cuenta, yes, you know, Uh, my, my own lifestyle, lifestyle behavior. behavior. It's correct to say that. ¿Qué dijiste? No, no pude entender. I couldn't understand. My own lifestyle behavior. Para mi propio estilo de vida. Para mi comportamiento, uh -huh. estilo propio de vida. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. Uh, lifestyle. Or my own lifestyle. Right. Okay, for my own life. Own lifestyle. Yes, or my lifestyle. own significa por mi cuenta. Por ejemplo... Este, ¿vas a ir a la fiesta ah. con nosotros? No, no, on my own, por mi cuenta. On my mm. own, on my own. Um, yeah, that was great, that was great. Uh, Denise, what about you? If you if you had the possibility to change, if you have, again, is that okay, the sentence? Uh, I couldn't hear. Okay, <laughs> if you have the possibility to choose something that you would like to change, what would you change? If I had my way. Si fuera por mí, como te he preguntado, mira, te pregunté más la pregunta. Dije, if you had the possibility to choose or to change, creo que dije, está mal. Tengo que decir, if you have the opportunity, if you have the opportunity to change something in your life, okay. what would you change? What will you change? A change is not a change. If you have the, if I 
I had an opportunity to to change to in your change? life something in your life to change. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, change means I cambiar. Know. I I don't uh, look the past. I, I always look, look the future. You focus. You focus. You focus on uh, on the present. You focus on the present. You don't focus on the, the present, present and the future. And the present uh, and future. Yes. Okay. That was good. That was good. And next question. Okay. Now I think the platform is here. Uh oh, they're not. It is not here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where, 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 where is it? Okay, let me make it bigger. Jesus, maybe I think there are a lot of people are using the platform right now. Sure. Now, can you see my screen? We are here. Yes, now we are in the Duolingo preparation. We are using speaking a strategy to speaking. Okay, this one could be. Here we have interesting questions. Okay, please, Denise. Talk about a gift that you gave someone recently. What was it? Who did you give it to? And how did it make uh, you feel? Why did you give it to this person? Can you tell me? Uh, well, uh, the last uh, weekend, I, I had a, a party. She had a party. So I, I bought a... Uh, a blackboard for her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel um, um, good. I feel um, um, yeah. Okay. Um, you you feel good, or you felt good? I feel good uh, about giving the present for her uh, because it's, uh, she can uh, use uh, that uh, board to practice uh, writing on, on, on it uh, because she's uh, two, two years old. Ah, oh, she's just two years old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it's like, uh, I my, younger, my, my friend's baby. Okay, okay. Lo que yo le hubiese podido agregar a tu respuesta para que haya más fluidez son conectores como, por ejemplo, in order to or so as to. Por ejemplo, I bought this, black, this blackboard in order to, con la finalidad de, or she will use the blackboard in order to practice uh, the, her writing or a drawing, you know, in order to or so as to, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and Jimmy, you please describe I, something. I'm using the rhythm, okay? The rhythm, the rhythm. The rhythm. <laughs> you're rusty. I'm using the rhythm. Yes, <laughs> uh, I just, I just realized what I didn't want to say it. You say it. No, I'm just kidding. No. Solamente que olvidamos esa palabrita. Eh, usamos cuando algo te estás oxidando, decimos rusty. Uh, rusty. Rusty. Yes, rusty. Can I get rusty? Uh, metal decay. If, if a skill you had is rusty, it's not as good as it was because you have not practiced it. ¿Te das cuenta? Uh, My Italian is a bit rusty. La culpa. Oh, how do you say the culpa in the game? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what happened? It's because of Jimmy. <laughs> it's because of when you use the because. Y Jimmy, continue. Jimmy, describe something you do to forget about work or study, I mean, to relax. What is the activity? How often do you do it? And how does it help you to forget? Okay. Um, when I, I have um, upset about my work, um, mm -hmm. I'm... I 
go. I used, I used to go with with my, my friends and, and practice and and practice the. Uh, no, I'm, I'm playing, playing some music, music uh, with with them. Not, not for example, example uh, at, at, in the at, at home with no in the house of my friend. friend. In my um, friend's I, house. In my friend. In my friend's house. house. In my friend's house. house. Uh, and he he. Um, He gave us a, 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 a space, a place to, to practice, uh, for example, uh, play instruments uh, because this this uh, this flat is a conditioned for for playing music there. And um, every Sunday um, uh, at the morning, we uh, we used to we used to practice practice uh, um, different songs. Uh, Uh, there is a uh, the best uh, the best option to, to forget about my work. Okay, thank you. Cuando quieres ir a condicionar, forgetting, no? forgetting about my, my work. Yes, as modified, no? Me suena más a condicionar, modified. ¿Qué quieres decir cuando dices we used to practice? Yo suelo practicar. Ah, ok. Eh, Podría ser we usually, no confundir. We usually, ah, we usually. Ah, we used to. Yeah, cuando tú me dices we used to go, por ejemplo, I used to go with my friends. I used to, yo solía ir con mis amigos. Ahora ya no vas con tus amigos. Ajá. Entonces, no te confundas ah, usually, sí, usually, sí, sí. con used to. Ahora, si tú quieres decir que estás acostumbrado a practicar, puedes decir, eh, no sé, I am used to, y aquí con ing, practice it. El I am used to practicing es, Estoy acostumbrado a practicar I am used to practicing En este caso, por eso he dicho We are used to practicing Estamos acostumbrados a practicar In my friend's house Which is modified no. Ok In my, my friend's house Or, or at my friend's house. house No At home At home significa en mi casa Ya está con at El otro es In my uh, house Siempre con in In my house también tenemos in my place. In my place significa en mi, en mi casa. Pero se sobreentiende que es in my place. En mi, ¿Dónde es la fiesta? Where is the party? In my place. En mi casa. Ok. So we're going to stop here. Nos vamos a detener aquí. You, uh, mientras voy viendo la grabación, ¿alguna consulta que tenía?